Hi, this is Todd McCormick, Master of Arts, and uh, a former university instructor at a major university in Ohio. Um, and I uh, taught math for six years. I taught uh, what was called eventually intuitive calculus, and before that, um, algebra. Uh, it was uh, kind of a departmental final midterm. Some such order, <laughs> uh, type courses, and I uh, worked with some uh, remedial situations, and I also uh, was working with the Lorraine Development Center for Kent State, and uh, I uh, put placements in for people that had um, come back to school, returning students, continuing students, continuing studies. Um, uh, I enjoyed that. I was glad I had some experience after six years. I could. Pretty much to get a decent job. Um, one of the things that happened, and I tried to keep that from going on, was that someone would take a course that they were blocked at like three times to get, so they didn't want to waste money. They got the time, just to risk. So I did some just talking, they make their own decisions, but building up skills with like 10,005, 10,000, whatever, and then 11, which is the, the course. In that, so you could go up to you know your upper division, whatever course uh, department, and, and follow the charts and graphs and all this mathematical visual and everything in between. Uh, at some kind of level, we can get a grip on it, and start on it. So um, I really, really enjoyed mathematics, uh, but I, oh my, I guess uh, about fifty-two years. I, I'm, old, I'm, old, I look a lot younger, <laughs> but um, anyway, yeah, uh, I'll hand it over. I'm. Uh, we're co-interviewing um, on uh, 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 num uh, phobia, math phobia, uh, and no, big on solutions. You know, uh, problems are fixed, and big on solutions to problems. Um, one, one trick is in math: find five different ways if you can <laughs> of a solution, uh, uh, a group of solutions. So, um, but anyway, this is Marco Botello on the other line, and he's a roboticist and. Master's in SUNY and um, holds a doctoral degree. Um, and we kind of bumped into each other a long way. Uh, three years now, we've been each other. Um, how I uh, got in contact with him was uh, his robotic stuff. I have a, a retired professor emeritus for Fiverr, and uh, I think the interested in robots, he taught uh, CAD CAM computer and uh, robots. All kinds of back in the 60s, 70s, uh, unions, <laughs> all those, you know, guru things. As well as you get close to get inside, burns and sandals kind of stuff, but uh, it, it kind of cleans up. So, um, anyway, yeah, that's a, that's a story. And I'll let, I'll let Marco fill in the blanks. Do some horn. <laughs> thank you. Okay, thank you, Todd. That's some introduction. Basically, uh, math phobia starts with the fact that uh, at the elementary and high school levels, uh, the teachers that are teaching math actually have no background in mathematics. So what they do is instill in the students the fear that they have of mathematics. And that's how math phobia starts. However, there's a way around the problem. At the lower levels of mathematics, you could use games to introduce mathematical concepts and reduce the fear of mathematics. At higher levels, you could use uh, AI programs that are free, such as Maxima, to intuitively show students mathematical concepts graphically. Excellent. Yeah, a lot of ideas there to uh, resolve and uh, be good to be found aware of situations. Um, I had both coins myself on the idea of math phobia. I definitely got that what you're talking about. Before that, though, I mean, it's almost like a, a 
long veteran thing that before going into it, I was in pretty good shape. It was the event crisis thing, tragedy, uh, that was a problem to solve, like uh, scare tactics of some, uh, probably, you know, some, uh, more thinking they're more innocent, whatever, of the effects. But, um, yeah, I, I remember, I remember clearly in fourth grade, um, of, uh, Finding my my fall was gonna be long long division uh, uh, that, yeah. and um, it's really crazy because there were times I could do it just to have the time in my brain to resolve everything. I'm a pretty quick thinker sometimes, um, and you know, what's thinking is that uh, it, it is something that um, exists in a sense like a unicorn's white. You know, just uh, it's there, it's not there. Um, it's overcome, it's not there. Phobias for me, in general, I've noticed from experience that, as a text, you know, reference, uh, phobias are uh, really dissolved uh, when you learn about them. When you study your fears, they basically usually uh, turn to dust, I'd say. Um, and that phobias uh, like that now. There, there are some kind of like exceptions and interpretations uh, with uh, calling a phobia kicker or some phobias like loud noises and fall heights or something that's like by birth. But, um, uh, I was under that questioning that connected idea was that um, when, when does the mathematics come into the, the, the growing brain? And I mean, growing from uh, birth or before that, actually, we'll be able to halfway there, out, and the whole being ourself, and then into uh, 24 years now, the brain's still young, uh, generating and, and growing. So they didn't need to believe that. But uh, anyway, uh, is that, is that a phobia can change, you know. Uh, Leonard Seligman, Marty Seligman, well, not Seligman, of the University of Pennsylvania, followed up somebody you probably know, but with his book, uh, Learned Optimism. And what you can change is what you can't, is our thing. So, uh, phobia, uh, you know, is is a, a word that, that's used. And, you know, a lot of times it's related to fear. And, and I find that um, it's best to befriend, uh, so to speak, um, what, uh, what comes comfortably to you and, and keep in mind what the other thing is going on too and then be, you can know, like associate that and uh, I think a friend that but make it feel comfortable to you like discomfort right I mean a phobia is basically a disease right? so instead of disease and discomfort you want ease and comfort right You're doing the mathematics um oh now, I've, I've, for myself, and then just works like a charm, I can't believe it. Um, yeah, I, uh, I, I go to the thing, study your fears as, as the bottom line, and I allow myself one fear, uh, and, and that's the spirituality. Uh, so I, I hold this very dear to my heart um, about the importance of fears in, in studies. Because, uh, for example, studying is a form of basically worse. If you look back in the religions, and you know, there was also my, you find a guy like that, somebody there, or open and see all the different, you know, religions, and, and you know, things like this uh, to overcome, and mentions. And math, the word itself, actually comes from uh, basically some constant shift uh, and, and um, dipthong or vowel shifts that uh, it's very common. Math, math is basically a word that means study in some interpretation. Um, in Hebrew, uh, uh, Talmud, Lamed, you know, MD, MTH, um, parts of Spain, uh, Castellano, uh, actually transferred at the MTH. There's nothing to do with the language in the world, the world languages. I, I found a book on it exceptionally, but it uh, helps. Cross, cross study also helps too. And, and it, so uh, that would be our uh, learning, you know, the language of mathematics. Uh, Meaning the language of sciences, uh, hard, you know, science and then this shift, you know, those shifts you can have, you know, like a psychology as an example. Uh, at first it was like quote unquote a soft science. So it works as well. I mean, if you have a, a quote unquote, you know, like fear, 
can study your fear. And I, uh, I, I took the, the learning examples out there in the real world for phobias. Was it? I didn't have. I you know, to be honest, I probably caught myself you know, every once in a while in a year that I have this fear of bats. <laughs> that fear I overcome. It's just I get caught off guard. So it's, it's a, the sense response thing is, is too quick sometimes. Then I resolve it or not. Um, but anyway, besides that, can I say again? Uh, Falling or, or heights, heights were uh, phobia and uh, and the loud noises were actually in there for survival. And some people say that they're for good. You can maybe learn to you know cope with them and, co- and cooperate with um, some like, some healthy behavior responses. Um, but you know, like in the days of dinosaurs, or you know, if you heard a loud noise of a dinosaur at your door, you might want to run or hide or something or fight or flee. You know? So. Um, yeah, anyway, uh, back to my long division. That's what I felt, but I had a struggle with this in the beginning. Uh, again, um, uh, you know, my dad at that time had uh, started, when I started with school, he started with school. He had started, he had worked with, uh, I don't know, five, 10, 15 other people that started a, a regional campus of Kent. And he was working with uh, immigrant companies, teaching like a technology step course, and Kent State kind of bombed out. And so he ended up uh, in a tech school, uh, a community, like, branch, uh, regional, uh, tech, you know, uh, with technology, now it's, uh, it's like, uh, nursing or, uh, more, uh, and also hybridization, I think, or something with plants, um, so, the fee, the sort of study is mad, and, uh, if, if anyone has worship, it's like, you know, holidays are going on, um, worship is something that you do, you, uh, learn, or you, uh, give back, you know, the word religion talks about like returning to law, law, uh, uh, law, L-E-Y-E, I think it's Latin or French, and uh, L-E-G-I-O is that equivalent with vowel shifts and constant shifts, so the words are like, you know, the words click. Um, religion, re, you know, again, right, right, already like, you know, return, uh, you know, reposition, uh, all those already words are to uh, return. Um, so you're returning to the laws. And how do you know the laws? You study them. And this goes back to like, this is like maybe hints of me that, um, you know, where, when do these laws come into play? Do we, do we study them and learn them? Uh, are they there from birth? You know, do, do, are, are math skills there at birth or before? Um, you know, in, in, uh, in Judaism, the, uh, the fetus is not a home, uh, a whole person, uh, uh, until he, uh, he or she is not halfway or more from the mother. That's, that's the thing. So, I mean, when does that happen? I mean, if it's a person on its own, right. Um, or if he or she, uh, so, so this is a thing that came, uh, came up and uh, not until I, I got through uh, my undergrad uh, shipper situation, um, I bounced around a lot, uh, I'd say. And, and uh, love that the man is getting like, from the age of the like, pure floor. That's what I was getting at. Uh, what went into fourth grade shore, and so it didn't completely knock the lid on me. But, um, you know, I, uh, I see the importance of exercising the mind and not listening to uh, the main people about the uh, experiences you have growing and learning early. Too early, that kind of stuff. Yes, too early. Um, and I think that the focus is it healthy not to learn about it. Is it, you know, is, is it a health one thing? I mean, the brain is healthy. You're interesting, clear thinking. Uh, confusion is not something we want. So, you know, let's stay clear of confusion, of course. Um, you know, muddy water, let's stay becomes clear. I was talking to somebody today about that. I just, uh, I just saying, I say, if things get too tense and too muddy, uh, two steps back, you know, and then let it go clear, go at it again. Um, but still, this idea of, uh, you know, um, study reducing fears. Uh, and uh, so bouncing back at time periods like three or four, my dad taught me uh, the Wall Street Journal how to follow AT and T. My my grandparents were given at birth. So a small, no, a you know, small, small. Uh, but uh, I, I learned to follow with that. And, and chess is you know, often considered a very clinical mathematical uh, situation. And I used to be pretty good at it. At three or four, I was able to be my dad. You know, he, he taught me games. You know, the different openings and things, and I, I could get him on it, uh, and, uh, and I sat away for a long time, <laughs> so, 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 I, and, uh, that, you know, keep it innocent, something like that, but, uh, I did run into, uh, actually, 
hard. Um, I like to give a lecture on the Riemann zeta, some ability, I emphasize that part, some ability method for conversions to one half of you. Riemann zeta thing was a pet for uh, John Nash. Many people, it's been around oh, about 100 years. Um, Riemann in uh, Zurich uh, just, uh, had a uh, little uh, brainstorm and wrote it in the margin, the marginal expression that this Riemann thing should converge with all zeros, all numbers that make it zero in a function into onto the half, real half flight, which is like a two-dimensional half, you know, per unit ball in a circle, and half is half over, and it goes straight up vertical, vertically, and that's where all the zeros end up for Riemann zeta. They, they, since they, they can't prove it, it's a story. But we did have somebody at Kansas State, Dr. Chu, in, in 87, who put an operator in front of it, he put like, zero, Z to the N. The function itself is one over Z to the N. That you take the integrals by measure and you see conversions and things go, but you know, so you, you can prove it. All that does. Usually it's like uh, induction. And that means like, you know, you start it off with an initial sort that works there, and then two conjunct or adjunct uh, elements also work. And if you get those two things going, then you're on the right track, and that is the best of proof right there. Um, so, uh, anyway, full of yourself. So I, I really loved mathematics, you know, I think the next, I, I didn't, I, I used to, I had a real passion for it, I mean, it kind of, you know, I was like a lover that I had every night when I was a kid, you know, was a companion with me, you know, to play the numbers, I used to count my L numbers in different ways, like, all the things, I was like, oh my, you know, nobody in the world knows what I'm thinking, you know, how I express it, and it's crazy, but, um, uh, um, uh, 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 my approach to uh, uh, algebraic number theory. Uh, one thing was like the prime numbers, you know, prime numbers until uh, so, like just up to like a couple of years ago, or maybe like really slightly, it's, it's happened. They, they miss, they had missed uh, directed the symptom or side effect of me or whatever. Uh, I'm trying to say, uh, um, uh, you know, diagnosis, diagnosis that uh, anyway, uh, prime numbers actually have a relationship with neighboring numbers. So, a prime distribution has been a long toy to play with in mathematics. In, in algebraic number theory, primarily, there's the other is analytic number theory, which deals with functions, complexes, whatever. And real numbers, and you can go about straight lines, you know, jerking everything. But, um, so, um, they just recently found out, yeah, prime numbers have some association with numbers, so they're not discrete, but use that word. Uh, anyway. And um, they, they've been wrong a long time because everybody assumed that they did have a clean cut, you know, 11, 17, 19, twin primes, you know, 17, 19, two, prim, two primes in a row on the you know, odds list. Um, so uh, 41, 43 are cut. So those are called twin primes. And, you know, they was, well, you know, twin primes have distributions too, so how do we predict in, in these functions, you know, these prime? prime numbers you know. he's like a number algebraic number theory works very well or it did um, for a long time uh, work for uh, you know keying in uh, codes for uh, protection and uh, like RSA method is a one million buzzer it's, so, it's outdated now but uh, it's basically a, a crypto a crypto uh, you know cryptographical uh, field to, to, to make a you know a, a, a password you know, secure I think, uh, in the old days uh, so um Okay, so I'm going like three and four, really comfortable. I love, love tests. I don't like checkers. I hate checkers. I was bad at checkers. You know, I was like, this is, this is, uh, <laughs> I don't know what normal, but, you know, that, that's, a, that's, that's almost up to the buff. I always had to, like, scoop it up, but I was having, you know, make the most optimized engine, all that kind of thing. So, um, I had, like, a lot of, like, a physical associations, visually, shapes, and different constructions. Like, how much, how many weak points? I had a weak line, but I got a lot of strong things. And, so, um, I, I was, uh, really, I probably, like, um, coming one myself, and I'm growing to a point, and let's see what these schools now I'm going to, uh, are going to throw at me. And I got first grade, I got, like, a really, this is when my phobia almost took the first lead, but in life, um, the, the, the test that was, like, twice the speed, it was twice as long, uh, at a pace. Uh, that we had been using as like a moderation um, or benchmark. And so here it comes, the test. I gotta get you know, the first grade. And like something with, I don't, like, I can't remember, like addition and all, you know, I mean, it was subtraction maybe. And I, I don't know, like, all, I, I don't know, recall, but the thing was how, how fast I had to just buzz through that, keeping up and getting a 
I got through all of it. A lot of people were complaining, you know, they never, they couldn't get a chance to go through half of it, you know, I kind of, so, I kind of like a, like a hypomania state temporarily in control for that test taking time. And then it's over, you know, it's like a, a runner goes to intervals, right? A runner might do long days, so many times a week, and moderate days or, or maintenance days, and then uh, a short interval type, so to speak, uh, a day. So, just, it was kind of like an interval day where I'm running like 65, 400 or something, and, um, that, that was a uh, very threatening, but it didn't lead to it. It didn't. Um, I, I was like, you know, I, I just say I'm not 30 years of, of uh, formal schooling, and uh, <laughs> my dad told me, okay, now, forget everything, <laughs> and he was so right, you know. Um, so I, I, uh, I had uh, really um, kind, of, kind of then, like, uh, surrendered and quit to, myself, to put myself in the hands of the, the school and trust them. Uh, with the good education system. Uh, my dad taught me a lot at home. Um, he uh, has a surveying, a land surveying company. Uh, in the summers, or, you know, he would, you know, the professor would uh, do surveys, uh, land surveys, and, and land surveys on mathematics. And I, I hooked up with him about junior high, starting, you know, at, with the holding the pole and the fumble up. And I was with about 18, 20 summers. And, I really many uh, spring breaks and a couple of winter breaks. And so I really loved it. I really loved it. Uh, um, I was a pack horse. I was the instrument guy finally. I was a, you know, we had computers from, or computer program modules for calculators. Uh, TI-58, TI-57, we two of those in the surveying uh, module. They plug in and do the major calculations that you would use in uh, trajectory. So I had a lot of stuff going on outside of the classroom mathematics. Um, you know, counting, you know, uh, counting was a little bit bad, you know, I thought, you know, I used to be backwards from 100 to 1, or just straight through, or cycles, I, I used to take some meditation, yoga, tai chi, western, like the reflex, uh, relax, like a Benson uh, method, you know, in, in uh, medicine there, and, um, tai, sensitive meditation, okay, that's the, that's the key one, okay, transitive meditation, uh, basically, you stop on top of the breath, and bottom of the breath, and you just got to, you got your uh, spirituality uh, name within you, uh, like the Holy Om. <laughs> so, I mean, I, I'm an open-minded person. I, I, I'm not out to have my booze or anything. But anyway, so um, this is something. And, and uh, uh, rhythms of counting were another thing. Um, I started playing guitar five. I didn't want to pick it up until I was like 19 again. Uh, okay, just say it's like, it was like some kind of Vietnam thing I had to do, but uh, um, and before the tragedy. But anyway, I uh, I noticed, you know, in in, uh, in, in the instrument, I, I, I said, you know, instrument like room that the best was the first year of five. Um, TikTok was the first time. Anyway, but uh, the, the frets and there are half of the string lengths for octaves up and. You know, all these different things, and uh, I ended up now, now. I'm actually with the Guild of American Luthiers, and I built guitars in a bunch of strings of violin. First violin was a uh, parts from a kit, parts from a, um, a flea market, and it came out really beautifully. I was very, very happy with it. Um, so I turned everything out. <laughs> so um, anyway, these things, mathematics, it's everywhere. It, it, mathematics is really everywhere. Uh, it, it's just a matter of how much you spend your time and focus on being aware of your environment. I mean, from the clock, from uh, ratios, like a door has a ratio of the height and width, and which becomes my other, my side business, my other side, my main business is electronic publishing. And um, there's a standard, like two thirds type uh, standard for a book cover, it's about the area. What they're asking for is really if they can do your art, you know, that graphic design, uh, two to three ratio. Uh, yeah, um, okay, just, I uh, sort of like to go around, and I exercise to, you know, I, I do the students are not formally, at least informally, but try, like, just try and see, like, find one thing on the way home, or, you know, in the evening, just, you know, kind of playing on the, you know, the Wonders of the Universe as a sophomore, like, uh, uh, like moment, and, um, say, so, you know, like, do you see any math in that? You know, it's like, uh, I, I, uh, I, 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 I do, I do a little bit of everything. I, I'm a mentor, and mentor says, okay, you're all right. Your kids are intelligence. I got the papers now. 
and says, you know, um, you're not the case that uh, masters of many, or I mean, you know, a, a master of none was the your hand of many in the, in the um, case. So at that point, um, and, and it's true, you know, it's like uh, situations uh, come and go, and there are times that we're, we're a different perspective. Uh, and, and, you know, in mathematics, there's another thing, you know, find five perspectives on the same uh, problem, five solutions, you know. Uh, how can you resolve it? I see it, you know, the answer is in the question, you know, stuff. So, uh, I, I, it's really a little bit. Um, anyway, I, I uh, didn't want to say for my farther that um, if you have, like, a really serious phobia that's um, really blocking you, um, you know, I've been 11 years in a social work thing, and, I would say address it somehow if you get a professional to guide you through some phobia techniques. Uh, CBT, you know, cognitive behavioral therapy works good. Uh, familiarity, as my lawyer friend, uh, her husband, uh, you know, uh, said, uh, familiarity based consensus. Like, oh, I like that perspective too, because it is true. I mean, you can, I mean, you know, think about it. Like, uh, you know, things you, you know, don't tolerate or do tolerate with your family and things you don't, or do with friends or something like that, you know, just, uh, what's, you know, so it is a nice way to say, practice some objectivity, and Marilyn von Silvan, uh, you know, she had this, the highest, uh, Italian adult, uh, seven high uh, scores, uh, I think there's a gentleman from India who beat in her, uh, adult score, but anyway, she's in, uh, Mensa, as well as, you know, she's articles or she has something in the products out there, and, um, uh, has uh, some ideas to share, and that is to see things from like visual uh, with mathematics as a solution rather than equations or a lot of uh, memorized algorithms. You know, algorithms are those uh, processes, the the protocol, you know, the approach with a a pattern of uh, operations or events, or whatever. So you know, work with the come up with solutions. So um, still, uh, the phobia thing, um, you know, to a point. Uh, I, I would do. I would try it um, if, if it were severe enough to cause, uh, you know, the situation is not getting better very quickly, or you know, just you see, it's it's, it's all right. Um, sometimes study skills, and developing those study skills outside, uh, kind of like a cross training. Cross training with the study skills could include uh, math phobia. And I, I see. I mean, it's just like to me, it's just natural math. You've heard of a polymath, right? There's a polyglot, which means somebody who speaks many languages. Like from, you know, if you've heard Hebrew, right? There are a lot of better ones, you know, you know, oh, the Dana, the Kuzpah, the Kuzpah, the Kuzpah, you know, focus. And um, so, you know, uh, that that is something where, the, you know, polyglot has many languages. You can know, read it or speak or uh, understand um, the meaning. Um, the other thing is polymath. With polymath is like poly language is poly gloss, but uh, you're talking about many studies. So in other words, you're, you're not just uh, uh, say versed in mathematics. Say you're versed in music or uh, uh, literature or creative writing. Um, creative non fiction. Uh, you know, all these things that come out, but, um, you know, uh, aerodynamics, uh, biology, sociology, uh, medicine, you know, uh, Chinese traditional or, you know, uh, Ayurvedic, you know, uh, uh, folk, European folk uh, medicine, da da da, you know, um, you know, medicines in the Amazon, <laughs> uh, business, right? Uh, and how the brain works, uh, for layman or whatever. Um, how can you know, and study skills going along with that, right? You know the brain better. Um, you can uh, take some changes you know, to, to study better. Um, there's one I think right now is that uh, a protein is used uh, in study, and the equivalent protein, like an hour study, I'm giving a partial of numbers, but um, like five or ten peanuts would be good, uh, equal protein you use in your brain when you're studying. It might not be that much, actually. But if you sit still, study, read, um, the protein, you know, it changes in your brain. You got like five or ten equivalent um, with, uh, with the peanuts. So I was curious if I came across that one. That was uh, interesting. And the thing I did was in grad school.
go if they're trying to get a lean protein diet a few days before, um, and, and, you know, during an exam or, or like a little longer if it's not too extreme. Um, and I actually ate uh, all the kidney be- I like beans and um, I found fish. You know, the best fish for the brain, by the way, is the uh, best four fishes are uh, you have uh, uh, salmon, herring, tuna, and jack mackerel. And uh, those four have like the optimal, like vitamin E is laid there, fish oil, cod liver oil, you know, we got that in all Norwegian cod liver oil, so it's really nice. And um, your brain does get an amount of oil every day. Uh, it's basically one or two teaspoons, like olive oil, you know, one or two teaspoons um, of oil, or like cod liver oil, you know, the old uh, medicine. Um, so there's a lot to it. Uh, well, well, you know, definitely, like you think about, uh, you know, uh, yeah, and milk can be very important for example. So, and they can be our friends. You know, I always say like friends in a, in a mechanical way, or like a non uh, anthropolo- or you know, it's, it's not an uh, you know, non man like or anthropological uh, model. Um, you know, friends that uh, help us out. Um, I kind of think. Um, see, so you know, study your ideas. Uh, what do you? What do you particularly fear? Well, you know, I was trying to nail this down my freshman year. Uh, I think kind of one, kind of two. I was getting a four point. I got um, pine milk salon too because of the outstanding work. I did mathematics, which I kind of downplayed, but now looking back, you know, that was like an, that was nice to you, actually. Because um, I got into some rough water before that. And um, I always managed to be, uh, not to piss too much more, but I was always eligible for graduate school early from the undergrad days, every semester. Um, and I was scared to go, because I didn't want to blow it. I, know I wanted to be in grad school, but I had to be the double time like that. But anyway, um, so, phobia, phobia, phobia. Uh, familiar with it, the more familiar with it, okay. Uh, when does it become contemptuous? When it has the better hand? I, I don't know if that, you know, you can back away from it, usually. Um, so, the idea is, uh, a friend that learns what you can about it, what, what I ended up doing with that first year or so, uh, I also started taking, uh, uh, some time to decline, the rock climb, technical rock climb. And uh, it, this is like early 80s. Um, and I was going to an area about five hours away, um, Seneca Rocks. Uh, it's it's uh, Seneca is like part of the Iroquois tribe. Uh, it's in Rohongahela. And I saw some really amazing pictures of copperheads that had no competition with them to live. They were, and they were big. It was big. It was, it was, it was enormous. Um, and because they had, like, no, no, there's nothing to threaten them. They don't get a car driving over them deep in the Mount the and uh, it's just amazing. But anyway, so copperhead is one snake that was there. It was poisonous. And I thought, if I'm not climbing, I climbed about six years now from, from about, yeah, 81 87. And, and, um, and that part's called solo. That means anything I bet. That was my peak experience. And, um, it was North Carolina Grant. Yeah, I loved it. And uh, so I to go on moving my skills to other places to conquer, you know, conquer the store. I'm moving 20s to 40s, I guess, or 60s. Anyway, um, so, copperhead, someone told me, copperhead, you know, they have this skunk, uh, cabbage, uh, skunk cabbage smell. And I smell skunk cabbage. And I hadn't smelled it for a while when they told me that. Uh, so I was, you know, keen on that and that's way and I did come across that smell it was a snake it was a copperhead and then it was like uh, I got back and I smelled skunk cabbage and I said okay it's in that ballpark but it's not exactly the same way frequency you already call it your aromatherapy stuff um so frequency is not nothing <laughs> so I learned about the copperhead and I smelled that okay take a little bit of caution there right now and he says you can't because usually you can't feel your feet walking as they're on the ground like that um and the other two snakes that were in the area at the time, we didn't, there were rattlers, rattlers, but the, um, the, the, uh, the water moccasin, which, without getting water moccasin, water, watch when they're around. And I can remember swimming the side of the river, uh, the new river, uh, second retirement river, I'm sorry, I never was in another play, but, um, so, uh, there would be like water moccasin, mama water moccasin, a bunch of babies, which have, I think, the same, like, intensity of poison. So yeah, like, and I was saying, just you know, mind your own business and it's like, no cause you too fast. So um, I have a few, I don't feel because I, I grew up around horses a little bit. Um, I had a pony, a Welsh one, one I think it was in. She had uh, three colts from a Morgan. My dad's Morgan Stallion. She was a head of a horse. But anyway, chestnut and a blaze. And so Star was my first thing in a blaze and a chestnut. Anyway, um, so uh, anyhow, um, that was, uh, so I learned, and what about the other snakes? Well, water market, you know, okay, uh, water to watch out. So 
something I'm willing to grab by itself. The brain works on associations and those associations. And you want to like reprogram your brain, you can almost do it like without really that much, uh, I mean, persistence, but I mean, you know, it's not that big a thing. So I, I really look at it. And what you do is the better gets 10,000 hours into it, you know, master that, right? So, um, the, the other snake was the cottonmouth, and that was, uh, you know, a little bit of a mouth thing. It's caught, <laughs> yeah, like a white, white back mouth, a back of the mouth. Um, <laughs> the story that was, I went for the eggs in the morning on the river, in the river, and, uh, <laughs> well, I'm like, this, uh, somebody had gotten it, so it actually had the egg in its mouth, it looked like a cottonmouth. Uh, so, I, I come six years, and so, well, most times, I used to I brought it, I don't know, at least once a year, I guess, and, um, about five hours away. So I became more comfortable, and I still did, you know, precautions, like, they, they Boy Scouts, uh, so the story was, uh, when you're stepping over a log, you're most likely to then step on a snake, because you couldn't see it, and, but it's already there. So, um, that was another little tool. So, I said, okay, this is working, and I'm okay now. I remember doing like, we thought it was first seven, it just gets fallen a couple months before we got there, but uh, there was a big black snake in a tree that led and climbed, and my partner's coming up, and uh, it was a black snake. You know, black snakes are poisonous. The scratches, I mean, the bites are like cats scratching, a good sized cats in the spectrum. But, so this is like things, this is how it applies. You know, study your feeders, get comfortable with your feeders. Right? That's, obviously, if you're, if you're having a feeder, it's not comfortable, you know, it's, you know, physiological changes in the brain, and it goes into like fight or flight, maybe even, or like, uh, it's like it's, uh, the brain is threatened by like, uh, pathogens, so you gotta like figure out an immune system, you know. A lot of that stuff is, uh, uh there's like a lot of immune systems in, in, with brain chemistry, too, so you gotta watch out, um, and keep it, and, and it's a good skill to develop, so that helps you. Um, so, uh, well, anyway, so I'm back, I had a first grade, okay, really well, well, well Fourth grade, long division, and uh, it's funny because mom, my mother taught me it, and it has, she had a different, she came from the school, uh, like, you know, well, well, closer, you know, schools in rural, um, it's a, it's a small, you know, small town, uh, I grew up, and, um, so it wasn't much different, but I could see the, you know, combination, and then, and then things started getting all confusing, because I couldn't respond as fast as I wanted, otherwise, as I needed to, and I ended up, like, having one of those all night type things are not quite all night. Uh, trying to figure it out. Before it broke me, I was gonna break it, so to speak, or, or crack through the code. And my dad showed me how he wrote it, and my mom wrote it. I saw the differences, and I, yeah, I figured out, okay, I can do it, yeah, I can you know, trace it out easier. Um, and so I ended up going my dad's technique, because it's technically used to that school, I speak the same language, so to speak, uh, that dad language, whatever. And my fear was that uh, I, it, it's not gonna get me, you know. It's just a matter when I get enough stress out of my head, you know, whatever, whatever it is, uh, it'll fall. So it did, and um, I really didn't get reminded of that situation. So I came back after 30 years of formal schooling <laughs> to my own town. Like all these little memories, things like, oh my goodness, I remember I couldn't do long duration that one night until it got into the night, and then I was like, you know, so that was like a thing, and, and, and the fear that is really applying. Uh, I will. I have a master's uh, from the mathematics department, arts and sciences, master's degree. I got a men's at that same same sprint, four ninety five, and um, well, I remember now. But you know, I'm with Isaac Eisenhoff. <laughs> you know, uh, by honor of him and more of him. But um, it's neat. Uh, and, and boy, I tell you what, it's like a strong um, investment. It's a strong investment in your brain. You know, uh, Benjamin Franklin said, you know, put your purse into your, or mean money then, uh, put your money into your head, you know, the thief can take it, right? Watch out for the easy team machines. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Um, but, uh, you know, the thing is, it's a good investment, uh, because, uh, basically, as I experienced it, I heard it from, you know, authorities that, that one, um, the biggest thing that holds people back uh, from the goals they in the academic world, sometimes business or otherwise, uh, if that's not both, um, is the mathematics thing. It comes up. Um, and, and it comes a 
Corny, was it the Kraken that says the German, German uh, store, uh, line, is uh, God gave us some that's where to crack them. And, and that's where it comes. So I said, I like the thorny powders. I like the obstacles. I'll, I'll tell you one solution. Um, certain situations that work here and there. I mean, I've had 20 part time jobs, I think. So, But I had two full time, and I've had four careers full time. So, uh, music art writing, and, and uh, if you join uh, sur- surveying and uh, teaching as an access one. Um, so, I six years. So, um, anyway, uh, yeah. What what uh, I would say is, you know, give it a go. Maybe find some guys. And, you know, like, uh, I started down for the entrepreneurship thing. Mentoring, you know, it could be a mentor or or, or find a mentor for you, for you. and and uh, other people. This is the thing in business called scores, like re- retired executives, uh, as Gary Jensen. When they come back and help you out, you know, uh, they learn a lot in their line, and they not not run a business now, but they have all the skills there, and they like to keep their brain sharp so they can help somebody out in situation. Um, definitely, definitely, anybody that really did something spectacular and academic or. You know, sports has some kind of guidance, some kind of like a mentor of some sort, and, and uh, it's like you have to reinvent the wheel. Uh, you can learn as like uh, you know. So okay, sir, I, I'm going to end that. That's a brief sketch of a generalization of what comes up. Study phobias, study your fears. It's, it's, yeah, overcome your fears by studying, and that, that's the summary. Um, anyway, you could do that in a healthy way. You know. I would uh, not, not go to street drugs, please. <laughs> no. So, um, anyway, go for it, sir. <laughs> it's all yours, sir. Uh, it's just um, Dr. Potato. <laughs> you can supplement, complement, uh, implement, utilize, whatever. Go for it. Okay, it's all yours. <laughs> Hello? We're on yes, the air. Uh, I'm listening to what you were saying. Continue. On, on, a, on a tape? Yeah, continue, continue. Continue, okay. Uh, okay, we will put that. Hi, this is Todd again. Um, wow. You know, what I felt like when I was sitting at the max, and I finally chose it, I went through different decisions. One, I got accepted in biology of Purdue uh, to be a doctor, and that was one thing. It was a long way away. Um, and then another thing was a mechanical engineer. Is that I used to like to work with the mechanical stuff, you know, tear things apart. I was pretty good at tearing things apart, learning how to put back together, <laughs> or making new things that old. Um, now I do the same with art, or music even, like phrases, and, um, and, and writing, you know. So, uh, kept the gem, and I keep a journal, and then we cancel it. So, uh, mathematics, to me, it was like a strong point. Uh, I, during graduate school, yeah, during graduate school from about, oh, about until 95, I was in touch with a good friend who wanted to be the strongest candidate for the doctorate. He had the highest score in topology uh, and for the qualifying exams in pure math. And from MIT, and really was a strong person. And he lifted weights and was really a big guy, and he wanted to be the strongest candidate for the doctorate. So he got his doctorate degree. And so I hadn't seen him for 20 years since 95. I just contacted him. He contacted me or his wife, a mutual friend we had, back then single. And, um, so you know, we were like the uh, breakfast club thing, you know, so it was like, you did Wendy's and, you know, Steve started off at the Wendy's <laughs> and that kind of stuff. Um, anyway, um, so uh, he did not talk. He's in my cell ability seminar. I, uh, I stayed with uh, a Dr. Edifel from the University of Stockholm on the answer to quality. Uh, I came back from New York one in fall and asked him, okay, follow along in and go attend your uh, seminars on the answer to quality, which is a line measure maximal of the uh, natural one. Uh, basically, that's about it, you know. And um, 14 semesters, one hour a week, 14 semesters, boom, nailed it. The proof for the answer to quality that indeed the, the, the measure of the integral was a maximal for a certain situation. And uh, we took about two to uh, five seconds, 20 seconds breath, and continued. So we did a seven year proof as we say. Um, camera business maybe? I don't know. But uh, so I figured it out. But um, so that was like, that was, and I was able to jump in like that. It's weird. Was, um, I, I really like, you know, I really, um, or 
Ramona Jean's notes and uh, Ramona Jean, I'm trying to say it, actually I've heard it said a couple different ways, but uh, Ramona Jean said our G.H. Hardy, he had taught himself, self taught in India, Hardy, G.H. Hardy heard about it, and he was really good to me, all kinds of these conjectures and whatnot that were close to being proved, and so he shipped, he went up to England and kind of did really well, they got a lot of information on uh, developed, and he was, you know, self taught so it was like some uh, transition, transposing, translating, uh, so to speak, mathematically. And just took seven notebooks in the spring of her life, yeah, of, of these notes. And I looked through and I read them as like semi, because uh, it's all in Raymond's data. It's all in Raymond's data. And he had his own, Ramon's son had his own definition of Raymond's data. Uh, I said, what was the end of the series? Uh, right. Yeah. Uh, so, um, studied. Got the uh, tuberculosis. I had to go back home. So everything got proved. It was, and the spring of like did get to record this, this wonderful via self-taught genius that, that you know, Jay Charlie had helped him uh, find, a, find a foundation for his giftedness and um, express it. Uh, I was looking through. I was looking through. I started looking. It's like, hmm. Uh, yeah. Uh, wait a second. I'm going back here. And I looked and here many, many, many of the conjectures had been proved since they were considered conjectures. You don't know, conjectures are like an idea. You think it's true? Uh, it might not be. Yeah, there's no proof for it, but you think it's just a conjecture. So when you find a proof to it, it'll be a rich obscure proof that's strong, uh, but, um, you know, very, very articulate, expressing it, um, and it got it. That's, that's proof that's in the theorem. The conjecture goes with theorem. With that. Well, this gentleman named uh, Dr. Stackelberg uh, indeed uh, uncovers some real mystical, my- mystical uh, yeah, yeah, uh, answers to this. So that was like analytic number theory, uh, which to me is like, uh, it's like, uh, it's just like angels, mathematics, uh, can Google bunch time over. And uh, so here, here is uh, Stackelberg, Dr. Stackelberg, and I say, oh, I know that name because he hired me in 88. In 1988, he hired me to teach at Kent State. And uh, I I, uh, I just would go to the, the Ramon the Ramon notebooks and the French selection of a yellow cover and I'm serious about it. And I'd go through I'd, I'd pour over those, like that was where my heart was. This is where my mind was. Like, wonderful, wonderful stuff. And then and, you know, and flow from you know, talking about you know, to, to get to the quality, you know, the comp- which is you know, and like uh, and nature as a brother, the algebraic. Um, uh, so, um, so uh, this is not my like fourth generation the way I look at it. <laughs> it's like, what? And it's like, you know, Hardy, she's Hardy, uh, Ramajan, Stackelberg, and then I worked under Stackelberg. <laughs> uh, the thing was that I, um, wasn't formally, you know, working under him, like, in a particular course, so, uh, I, 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 I absorbed a lot, a lot of things that were related, and, uh, he was key. And, um, uh, I can't really, I don't even know much I really enjoyed working for him. Um, and it was a, he's a real saint. I think he's, uh, probably not there, he was like 20 years. He was chair of the department at the time, but it was a really quick time. He's a nervous one, so, uh, um, so, um, that was, that was something. Uh, basically, from the essence of quality, I got my notebook, I, I, uh, that I, uh, that I actually, I came up with something original from the chain, uh, from the uh, answer the question. And I had, I came back home, uh, had, ah, I don't know what notebooks m- made it, what notebooks ended up in the trash. There was no reason for any of them that says. But, uh, I, uh, since then, um, uh, Dr. Inflow's, uh, notes from that, uh, ha- have been, uh, put into, um, you know, print and, and, uh, no, any longer the, and, uh, you know, handwritten notes. So the, the handbook, I mean, the notes are available now. Um, like last year, you know, uh, I did a talk on the column, so I'm going to Dr. 287. 1987, Dr. 2 wrote his dissertation on the one data, some ability, and the other was adding some ability. He didn't get it for the big picture, it's the big grand prize, like, the course. But um, he got a modification of the function by so long as he had an overhead. It, it, it leveled it out, basically, so I could say it, and it did indeed show half was real, much more important in an only situation. They have with the basic uh, zeros. So, um, you know, between that and the other, I got a rich education in that number three, although, um, I hadn't had a lot of formal except for doctor. I passed a, a duct 
remember, I guess, one two books with that horse now. Uh, was uh, one a first and second complex at the Grassmaster and uh, qualified for the uh, doctor. Uh, so um, that was uh, that was a very interesting time. I, and looking back, I was juggling proofs from about two years, two or three years. Um, I, I needed to be able to juggle the proofs that I could use as a tool to prove something else. And um, I, 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 the, the book search was one way, but um, I managed to keep a lot of complex analysis in my head about what was kind of guided to that. Well, the one, one thing I learned, especially overcoming fears, categorize, minimize um, fears, minimize, bring them, converge to zero. You can visualize easily. Take all the garbage in the world, it's like zero dimensionless point, boom, map it all there like it's a black hole that's gone. You know, specify the losses, don't generalize. Like, oh, I can't do this whole step in a proof that I'm not good at human being because I can't prove anything like that. Doesn't matter. You know, and uh, it's, it's specify goals, um, achievements to take in. Uh, the more specific I can, the better off you are because then you know you have met that definition.